Welcome, Impactful Parents. It's time for the Impactful Parenting Podcast, where I give you parenting tips and resources to make you a more impactful parent to your school-age child. I am your host, Christina Campos. Hello, welcome impactful parents. Today we're going to talk about how much screen time is too much. Today I'm going to give you the guidelines for technology use that every parent can use this summer as a basis for boundaries for their children's screen time. And stick around to the end because today I'm giving you three rules every parent needs and suggested time allowances for kids depending on their age. So let's get started. With summer here and school out, many families rely on electronics to keep kids busy and out of trouble. I get it. I understand. And that has been the biggest question of the week. Parents asking, okay, I want to give my kids some screen time, but how much is too much? Now, unfortunately, many parents also have kids begging for more time on their iPod, their Xbox, their TV, whatever the electronic is. But we got to figure out how much is too much. And guidelines available that constitute healthy and unhealthy device use are conflicting. However, one thing remains consistent among many experts, and that is parents need to evaluate and consider their child's maturity level and responsibility with electronic use in order to make those boundaries or these big decisions. For example, while some kids can handle social responsibilities of social media at age 13, other children are not quite ready to handle social media and the whole Google machine until later in their teen years. So it does end up coming down to the parent making the judgment call. But hopefully today I can give you a little bit of guidelines and my personal recommendations. Now, if you plan to let your child be on electronics without standing over their shoulder, then you will need to be willing to dedicate some time to monitoring what your child is doing online. I know it takes some time for parents, but it's going to be really, really important. Next, talk to your kids about safe behaviors for online use and gaming. And finally, you will need to help your child navigate through cyber bullies and cyber predators. I suggest purchasing a monitoring app for their devices that blocks, monitors, and it limits the content that children can see. Teaching the social responsibilities of online use in the whole online world is really important. And many parents think that kids inherently know tech because, well, frankly, they can navigate technology with a second nature that many parents just don't possess. However, this tech savvy skills that they have don't usually cross over to social responsibilities of that tech use. Therefore, it is not appropriate to hand a child a device and expect that they know how to navigate the digital world. So let's get started with some general guidelines that parents need about and around electronics, no matter what the age your child might be. So I have three suggestions. Number one, every child needs this rule. Electronics should not be used in the bedroom. Yep, all computers, iPads, or phones should be used in the common areas of the house. Have your child charge their devices at night also in these common areas so that you can keep track of them. The light from the devices makes it harder for kids to fall asleep. And most of the inappropriate behaviors that electronics electronics um, can bring happen when kids are hiding in their room with their electronics. So rule number one for anybody, no electronics in their room. And you got to start this from the beginning, parents. Otherwise, if you have a teenager who's already using electronics in their bedroom and then forcing them to come out of the bedroom to use it, it's going to be more of an uphill battle. So from the beginning, no electronics in your room. Rule number two that every child needs is mealtimes should be device-free also. 
eating meals with your child, even if it's not a structured mealtime setting, is an excellent opportunity for you and your child to talk. Electronics at the table block conversation. Even if you and your child don't have anything to say, parents need to give their children the opportunity to start a conversation. And that happens when there is a device-free eating space. So take the screens away while they eat. And my third rule that every child needs is screen breaks should happen every hour. Yeah, breaks don't need to be long, but your child should put down the electronics every hour and do something else for five to 15 minutes or more. Now, you're going to need to encourage your child and guide them to do this. They're not going to take a break on their own, but teaching your child to stop and take breaks in the middle of a project is an important skill to learn and will serve them as an adult. So encourage your child to go to the bathroom, grab a snack, take a short walk, or even do a few jumping jacks. Now, let's get to my recommendations for screen time use. Here at The Impactful Parent, we focus on the school age child. So that's where I'm going to begin. Let's start with children ages five to eight. Now, if you have a child age five to eight, then you should aim for two hours or fewer of electronics per day. In addition, children should have access to only high quality educational content. So no search engine browser like Google, no social media, and parents should prioritize active play and movement more than anything else. Whether it's electronics, trying to get your child to do active play and movement like yoga online, there's lots of really cool like movement based, go noodle, things like that. Or also encouraging them to do active play without the electronics. Now let's get to children ages nine to 11. Ages nine to 11, you're likely to get your child to start bugging you more and more about electronic use. If you have a child around this age, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So my goal is to keep my children at two hours or fewer of screen time per day still, but honestly, this time varies in my household depending on the day. This is the age range where I implement rules that require my child to do physical or mental exercises before engaging in electronics. For example, my own children have to complete an hour of reading before engaging in Minecraft. So prioritize physical activity, hobbies, homework, and chores to be completed before your child is allowed to play on their electronic devices. And still, no social media access and only a phone without internet would be appropriate for this age group, in my opinion. I highly suggest the Gab wireless phone. This phone looks like a smartphone and has many features like a smartphone, so kids love it but it doesn't have access to internet or social media or any search engine. So that means you don't even need a monitoring or blocking software app to feel good about your child having a phone. So to find out more about the Gab Wireless phone, which I'll talk about a little bit more soon, um, but you'll get those links down below. Now let's get to children ages 12 to 14. Children ages 12 to 14 should only be using electronics after their chores, their homework, and other responsibilities are completed. Three hours per day is the most I can recommend your child to be on their device. And of course, less is much better. And most kids will start bugging parents for a smartphone by this age, if they haven't already. I still suggest purchasing a Gab wireless phone as their first phone experience. Those phones have a GPS tracking feature on them so parents can keep track of where their child's located. That's really handy as a parent as we want to know where our kids are and are oftentimes dropping them off at camp during the summer or at somebody's house. And even sometimes they are walking to a local store with some friends. So it's nice to have that GPS feature. 
It also allows their child uh, to look cool with the imitation smartphone sleek design. So that's good. And once your child has proven to be mature enough to handle the responsibilities of a Gap wireless phone, then parents can consider upgrading their child to a smartphone. But the most important thing to consider when you're thinking of purchasing a smartphone for your child is, do they have the maturity to handle the large responsibility that it's going to take to navigate Google and social media appropriately? Also consider, is your child responsible enough not to drop or lose such an expensive item? See, the Gab wireless phone isn't quite as expensive as a smartphone. So that's really, really good. I think they typically run around $100 at regular price, and most of the time, those phones are even discounted. Is your child trustworthy enough to even complete responsibilities like the homework, the chores, before they use their smartphone? That's another thing to consider. And you, as a parent, need to be ready to monitor your child's social media accounts and have conversations about online predators, cyberbullying, and other really mature topics. So it's something that it really needs to be think about and not just the child needs to be ready, but also parents for those big conversation. And once you give your child access to a smartphone, they are very likely to guard that privilege like a starving animal holding a meal. So if you ever have to take that phone away, you must be prepared as a parent to pry that phone out of the hands of a wild beast with a death grip. So <laughs> really make sure that before you buy a smartphone for your child, that they are ready and you're ready to take on some of those challenges. Consider a safer option like get the Gab wireless phone first and make sure that you and your child are prepared. And I really just feel like that's my highest recommendation to you if you're really considering of getting a smartphone. Start with something small, see if it works out like the Gab wireless phone. And then if it works, now you can upgrade. All right, because before I move on, don't forget that you are literally purchasing a small computer for your child's pocket. So it is really a big deal. Now let's get to children older than 15. If your child older than 15, they might be ready for a smartphone if you deem them responsible. Yeah, so still prioritize physical activities and homework and chores to come first. Still try and limit screen time to around three hours or less. That's going to be the goal. Still be prepared for serious talks about social media use and predators and safe internet behaviors. I'm a big fan of monitoring and blocking apps that help your child not see inappropriate online content. So if you are going to go with the smartphone option, purchasing one of those blocking and monitoring apps is going to be important. Many of those apps also limit their internet use, which is helpful. And at this age, it's also important to have rules around phone use while driving. It is not until your child is a senior in high school that I consider taking off those parental controls that I'm talking about and all the monitoring that you're going to need to do as a parent. Why? <laughs> because some families with more responsible kids may want to consider giving their child the freedom of the no monitoring while their child is still in their home. It gives the child an opportunity to have, let's say, a, an adult-like responsibility while still having the support of their parents nearby. Having said this, I wouldn't recommend taking off parental controls before your child is a senior in high school. And even if they are a senior, consider they still may not be ready. This is a judgment call that only a parent can make. I find that sometimes the sweet spot for trying no parental controls can be March of their child's senior year or even the summer before college. Keep in mind it's much easier to withhold a responsibility than it is to take it away from your child from that death grip. <laughs> so electronic use is about your child's readiness and your readiness as a parent to monitor your child's devices and have those difficult conversations. 
I hope that was really helpful for you today. Please don't forget that I'll leave the Gab Wireless uh, links if you want to check that out down below in the comments. Also, I'll leave the, um, in the comments my website, theimpactfulparent.com, because there are lots of free resources there for your school-aged child. And there is also information about paid programs. I do parental coaching. And of course, refer and share this video with a friend. Push the like button, share it off with somebody, subscribe to The Impactful Parent so that we can spread the word and give this good information to other parents who need it. You got this, and I'm just here to help. Thank you for listening today. Remember to subscribe and share this podcast with a friend. And don't forget, the Impactful Parenting Podcast is an extension of the Impactful Parent community. Go to the Impactful Parent website and download the free Impactful Parent app so you don't miss a parenting tip that could help you and your family. Thanks for listening today. So go to theimpactfulparent.com and see you next episode.